what we do at Eclipse to, to mitigate our risk. Code that comes into Eclipse comes from three different sources. It comes from committers who establish their right to commit to our repositories based on meritocracy. It comes from contributors, and these are individuals who may contribute to the code base uh, a, a patch or a bug fix. And it also comes from third-party sources, and those sources are places such as the Apache Software Foundation, SourceForge, and others. From the standpoint of our committer contributions, we make sure we have legal agreements in place with all of our committers to make sure that we have the necessary rights to redistribute that software. In the case of an individual committer, we also will have an agreement signed by their company or their employer, so that no, acknowledging that they know and understand the contribu contributions that are taking place and the terms that they're being provided on. In the case of contributor contributions, so these are bug fixes, typically by somebody who's using the software, has found diff some, something perhaps deficient, sometimes enhancements as well. Uh, we make sure that all of those contributions come in via Bugzilla, which is our, it's our bug tracking system. By doing that, the terms of use that apply to our website come into play, and all of the licenses are laid out there very clearly that the code is being granted under. So we make sure that the code that is being contributed in the case of a modification project code comes in under the project license for the project. If it's a modification to say Apache code, then the license granted to the Eclipse Foundation would be both the Apache license and the Eclipse public license or, or the project license that applies to that project. And in instances where it isn't a modification of either of those um, types of code, we get a very broad license grant it gives us the rights to redistribute the code under the terms that we need. Third-party contributions. We get a lot of third-party contributions at Eclipse. Um, it seems to me at this point, and I, and I haven't done the analysis yet, that we probably looked at the vast majority of Apache projects and continue to on an ongoing basis. And we keep a complete due diligence on each and every one of those third-party packages that a project wants to redistribute. One thing that is not necessarily well recognized and understood is there's a lot of nesting that goes on in open source projects. So if you get a binary for distribution of a, of a project, say from Apache, um, and you get the related source code, you will actually find many, many other projects contained within that source code. And then if you get the source code for each of the binaries contained in the first level of source, you'll find even more nesting. So here's an example, and it's a, it's a real example for an Eclipse project. They, uh, they needed to use News 2.0, which is an Apache project. They read up on the source code. Uh, they found out that they needed to use Access 2 version 1.1 as well. So they grabbed that binary. It looked like it was going to be relatively easy, two binaries. Um, the Eclipse Foundation would do due diligence on that, and we'd be set to go. When we had a look at the source code for the Muse 2.0 project, this was the first level of nesting. So these are all potentially open source projects, other open source projects with, that are contained within that first level of source. When we looked at Access 2 version 1.1, this was the first level of nesting. So that's just the first level. Now we work with our committers to figure out what do we really need to look at from a due diligence standpoint, do they really need all that code, and we whittle it down to, to identify the key requirements. Once we've done that, at each level of the nesting tree, then we will uh, then we'll set out and do the due diligence on each one of those individual components. We look, when we do our due diligence, we really look at a project from two perspectives. The first is provenance, sometimes referred to as pedigree, and the second is license compatibility or suitability. And we have tools that help us as well. So the provenance sounds like a fancy word, but really what it means is who wrote this code and how did they agree to the license? So we track that for each project and look and see, did they have a handle on who contributed the code? Is there a clear record? How did those individuals agree to the license? Here's an example of a project that's handled um, the management of their provenance very well. 
Amber 3.0 is run by Terrence Park. He's a university professor in the United States. And he has ensured that each committer to his project signs a certificate of origin. And if it's a contributor, he has an automated means of getting that contributor to agree to the BSD license. And he keeps track of each of those contributions. From a license suitability standpoint, and I say suitability because it isn't just a legal analysis from our standpoint, it's, it's also a suitability analysis, we look at each and every license that comes in. So first we look at the consistency with the intended use. Most times we're looking at open source licenses that are well suited for what we want to do. Sometimes we'll see a project that wants to do an early implementation of a specification or something of that nature. And then we may have to work with the specification organizations to make sure that we can do what they want to do in Eclipse. We look at objectionable terms, terms that we consider objectionable in any case. Perhaps the best one uh, that we're aware of to date is the Sun Binary Distribution License Agreement. It has a reverse indemnity in it that is very favorable to Sun, not so favorable to everybody else. And because we don't, uh, we don't like to see that term in the license, we don't currently take on code that has um, that license that applies to it. We also look uh, for licenses that have terms that cause our downstream consumers difficulties. Uh, probably the best example of that license today is the LGPL, or Lesser Community Public License. Uh, we don't allow free distribution of code currently from Eclipse under that license because of some of the provisions related to reverse engineering and concerns by some of our, our significant members that that's going to cause them difficulty in managing their licensing obligations downstream. And finally, we look at legal incompatibility. Is there an incompatibility with the other licenses at Eclipse that would uh, prohibit us from using that material at Eclipse. <coughs> Talk a little bit more about license incompatibility because there's a lot of confusion about it. License incompatibility really comes into play in particular with the copyleft licenses. And so if you recall, those are licenses where uh, the if you modify the source code, uh, you have to distribute the, the modified uh, version of the code under that same license. So if you have license A that has a copyleft license and it says if you modify this code you have to release that code